Hey, what's up everyone? Josh Quinones here and today I'm going to be sharing with you all what my best smartphone of 2020 has been. Now notice that I didn't say the best smartphone of 2020. I said my best smartphone of 2020 because you know what? There has just been so many great devices that have come out this year that I can't really say that, oh, this device is the best one for you because everybody's going to have their own personal preference on what device was best for them. So that's why I am saying this is my best smartphone of 2020 and that device is, as you know by the title, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This device has been amazing for me this year. It's been able to take care of everything that I've needed it to and more. Now, I did just recently release a video sharing what my favorite smartphone of 2020 was, and that was the Galaxy Z Fold 2. And I did explain in that video why this was my favorite phone of the year and not my best phone of the year. And if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, I'll make sure to link that video down in the description below in case you want to check that out if you have not done so already. But yes, my best smartphone of 2020 has to be the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Okay, now I never actually released my full review for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Instead, I kind of just released a bunch of separate videos on this device. So I guess this video right here, you can kind of consider my full review since I've had it from a day one, but let's go ahead and get into it. So starting off with the overall looks, of course, I have said this in many videos, there's no doubt about it, that this is an amazing looking device, except for that camera hump. I still, you know, I feel the same way as I did day one. It's a really big camera hump. So if you're someone who likes to carry your phone around naked you might want to be a little careful with that i personally suggest throwing a case on it in case you happen to drop it you don't have to risk damaging that big camera hump in the back especially if you happen to drop it flat down on a flat surface like that yeah, you might risk damaging it. I've already damaged my display once. I had to get it replaced because I accidentally dropped it without a case on a rock. So I also suggest, you know, throwing a screen protector on there as well. And if you're interested in any of the cases that I use or screen protector, I'll make sure to have some links down in the description below. But aside from that, I mean, this is a beautiful looking device, everything from the back to the front. You get that beautiful mystic bronze color in the back, which I really like. I mean, I think it looks nice. It looks premium. And I really like that matte finish in the back because I I never have to worry about fingerprints if I do carry this phone around naked. Then going to the front, you get that beautiful display. I mean, I've said this in many videos, you cannot go wrong with a Samsung display. Everything just looks sharp, nice and vibrant. I mean, the colors just pop, which is something that I personally like. And then when you dig deeper, getting into that 120 hertz of smoothness, I mean, you cannot go wrong with this display on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It has really been an enjoyable experience. Whether I'm just scrolling through the, the app drawer or going in and out of apps, Apps, scrolling through YouTube, Amazon, Twitter, whatever it may be that I'm doing on this device, it has been such a smooth experience. So yeah, aside from being just smooth, I mean, the performance has been great at all. I personally have not experienced any lag with this device. I mean, like I said earlier in the video, this phone right here has been able to handle everything I've thrown at it. And I mean everything that I've thrown at it and more, including my 4K video editing on this device. For those of you that don't know, maybe this is your first time to the channel. Yup, it's true. Every video that you guys see on this channel has all been edited on a smartphone with the majority of them since I've gotten this device being edited on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And if you're interested in seeing a full video of showing how I edit videos on this device right here, just let me know down in the comment sections below. But just to kind of give you guys a little idea of what I use, I use an app called KindMaster right now at the moment. I used to use an app called Power Director, but it was just kind of giving me problems. It, I mean, it, it was working good for a long time, but recently it just kind of started giving me problems for some reason. I really don't know what happened. Maybe it needs an update, but KindMaster has been working great for me so far. So this video that you guys are watching is also going to be edited on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And that's one thing I love about this device is that it can handle everything that I thrown at it. And not only that, it can also handle a lot more as well. So not only do I love the looks of this device, but I also love the performance and the smooth of it as well. And then aside from, you know, just using the device and editing videos on it, playing games on this device has been amazing as well, especially games that support that high refresh rate. I mean, you cannot go wrong when gaming on this device right here. Gaming is so smooth. It looks so good on this phone right here. And then of course, 
With the phone that runs this good, you need a good battery life, right? Well, I wouldn't say that the battery life on this phone has been the best battery life that I have ever experienced. I will be honest here, but I mean, battery life does get me through an entire day. Now it does vary uh, between if I'm using the 120 Hertz display or if I do tone it down to 60 Hertz because you do have that option. So if I ever come across a day where I know I'm not going to be near a charger for a very long time until later, later in the day, then I'll switch it over to 60 Hertz because that does does save battery life and it has gotten me really late into the night but if I know I'm gonna be around a charger you know every once in a while I'll keep it on that 120 Hertz so I can enjoy the smoothness that this display has to offer without having to worry about the battery dying on me because I know there is a charger around but when I do have it on that 120 Hertz I still do get some decent battery life I'm able to make it through my full workday and a little bit into the night now I won't make it super super late into the night like I said unless I'm using that 60 Hertz display but with 120 Hertz, I still make it through the majority of my day. And then if I want to make it into a little bit later into the night, I'll go ahead and just put the charger on for a little bit, maybe wait 15, 20 minutes, and I can take it off the charger and finish using it for the rest of my night. So when it comes to overall battery life, I mean, honestly, I haven't had really any worry about battery life on this device. It, for me personally, it's been great. And I still average around anywhere from five to seven hours of screen on time, which I think is uh, really all you need for the average user. I mean, some people even use less than that. So overall battery life, has been great on this device. And I even did an all day battery drain test on this channel, which I also link down in the description below in case you wanna check that out. And battery has been pretty much the same since then. I mean, this phone hasn't been out for a full year yet, so I wouldn't expect the battery to be a lot worse than what it was from day one. I mean, battery life should still be performing <laughs> great on this device. And then going over to the cameras, these have got to be some of the best cameras that I have ever used in a smartphone. I am able to get some amazing photos, whether I'm using the main lens Lens, the telephoto lens or the ultra wide angle lens. I mean, you cannot go wrong with that ultra wide angle lens. I think every device needs to have one. And then when it comes to that telephoto lens, using that zoom, I mean, you can capture some great photos with great detail, especially at five, 10 or even 20 times zoom, I mean, you can get some great pictures. Now, when it comes to the 50 times zoom, it is, you know, it's acceptable if you need to be able to see far away and you, maybe you wanna take a picture, maybe you really can't get close to whatever it is you're trying to take a picture of. I mean, that 50 times zoom could come in handy now it's not something that's going to give you the best quality when it comes to taking photos, but it's still pretty cool that you have it on this device and you can be able to just show it off like, hey, can your phone zoom out this far? Can you see what that is over there? Oh, well, guess what? I can, which I have done before with other friends that don't have this. And yeah, they do trip out on the zoom features on this device, even though it doesn't look the best. I mean, it's still pretty cool that a device like this is capable of being able to zoom out that far to be able to see something from far away. So when it comes to taking photos on this device overall, I think they are great when it comes to taking video. A lot of you may not know this, but even though I did get myself a camera not too long ago using the Sony ZV-1, I still use my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra to record a lot of the content that you guys see on this channel because that's just how good the cameras are on this device. It's good enough to be able to make your YouTube videos on, at least for me, at least me personally, that's what I think everybody might not believe or think the same, but I have been really loving the cameras on this device, especially when it comes to video. So overall, I have no complaints when it comes to the cameras on this device. And it just gets me excited uh, for what Samsung has in store for the future because I mean, it can only get better from here. So really excited to see what they are going to bring to their future device devices when it comes to the cameras. Now, aside from the cameras, there is one main thing that a Galaxy Note device is known for from the Note 1 all the way up to the Note 20 Ultra, and that is boom, the S Pen. And this is one big reason why I love this device so much. And that's uh, why I said at the beginning of this video that this is the best device for me and maybe not everyone else because, you know, a lot of people probably aren't gonna find themselves using the S Pen, maybe here and there, or maybe not ever at all. One of my buddies actually has a Galaxy Note device and he never uses the S Pen at all. He just uses it as a regular device. So that's why I say that the Note device isn't for everyone. I mean, you might as well get yourself a Galaxy S device rather than a Note series. But for me personally, I use the S Pen a lot. And I mean a lot, especially when I find myself needing to go to the store to pick up a couple of things, some groceries. Me, I have the worst memory ever. I mean, I can. there can probably be three things that we need here. I go to the store and I will literally forget all those three things that we needed. So 
This S Pen really comes in handy because I don't have to write anything down on a piece of paper and then remember to take that piece of paper with me without leaving it at home or in the car. All I gotta do is pull out the S Pen when the phone is powered off and I can automatically just start jotting down whatever it is I need. And it is as easy as that. And then once I'm done, all I gotta do is just pop the S Pen back in the phone and boom, whatever it is that I jotted down is automatically saved into my notes. So once I get into the store, I just open up notes and boom, my list is right there. I don't have to forget anything anymore. So this S Pen really comes in handy. And not only just, you know, for jotting down notes, but it can also do a live translation. So if there's something that you need to translate, you can select the language, just hover over it and then boom, it translates it for you. You can use a cool magnifying feature. You can copy text using your S Pen. You can control the camera using your S Pen. This does have a Bluetooth feature. So you can take pictures, but not only take pictures, but you can switch in between lenses as well. Whether you wanna use the front camera, the rear camera. I mean, there's so much you can do with this S Pen right here. Even when editing my videos, this S Pen definitely comes in handy. I mean, especially when I need to cut out just a small portion of video and I really need to get into a tight spot. This best S Pen really just, boom, pinpoints exactly where I need to cut my video. And yeah, I mean, this S Pen really comes in handy. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, S Pen, S Pen, S Pen, but I can't get over how cool the S Pen is on this device and just everything that you can do with it. At least for me, like I said, me personally, I use it for a lot. It's not for everybody, but it is for me. I really like it. But yeah, I mean, this has been an amazing device. And honestly, it's it's kind of hard for me to really find something to complain about on this phone right here. I mean, of course, there is always room for improvement with any device. I mean, there is no perfect smartphone out there. But for a phone that is perfect for me, that is best for me or has been best for me throughout this year, it has to be the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Like I said, it's a beautiful device from the front to the back. Amazing cameras, really good battery life. Not the best that I've seen out there, not the best that I've used, but battery life has still been great. Those S Pen features are amazing. Cameras, the speakers on this phone, I mean, they sound so good. They get really loud as well. So when you're watching content, or at least for me, when I'm watching content, you get a great experience, not only with the display, but with the speakers as well. You get that stereo speaker effect. And I mean, like I said, they get loud and they, they're not, you know, overly loud to where they start distorting. If you turn the volume all the way up, they still keep that nice clean sound. So that's another thing that ha I have been loving about this device. But when it comes to any major complaints, honestly, it's kind of hard to find anything to complain about with this device right here. I mean, I've said this in uh, many videos before when they got rid of that headphone jack. I do wish this had a headphone jack, even though I know that's old news already. You guys are probably going to tell me, Josh, stop complaining about it. It doesn't matter anymore. Nobody uses it. Nobody needs it. Well, me, I... I've used it and it kind of sucks that I have to remember, I always have to remember to keep that uh, adapter on me if I do want to use wired headphones because I do use wired headphones to edit my videos on this device. I don't always like using, you know, the uh, speakers that come on the device. I don't like everybody hearing me edit videos. So I like, you know, to put on a good pair of headphones and plug them into the phone. Well, with this device right here, I do have to remember to always keep that adapter on me if I do plan on doing that. So that's kind of one thing I wish they would bring back or I'm hoping they'll bring back with future devices. I kind of doubt it honestly, but you know, I'm really hoping for that, that they can fit a headphone jack on this somewhere. But they did still manage to keep that uh, micro SD card slot. So I always love that I'm able to just throw an SD card in here or take it out. Like with this video right here, once I'm done with it, I can take that SD card out of the camera, throw it in here and start editing my video. So I really hope that they keep this SD card slot for years to come. But yes, the Note 20 Ultra has been an amazing device. I have been enjoying the experience that I have been getting out of this phone throughout the year, or at least uh, what, since August, I believe. So over the past couple of months, but for me, this past year out of all the great devices that I've used, and I've used a lot of great phones. I mean, I'm not putting any of those phones down. The Google Pixel 5, I mean, I've used the OnePlus 8T. Uh, what else, I've used LG devices. I mean, I've used a lot of great devices this year, but out of all of them, my top best device for me has to be the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And this phone has been through a lot and it's actually been pretty durable. Of course, I do keep a case on it and I have dropped it a lot with the case on. And thankfully, I mean, this device still looks brand new. It's been through a lot. So I'm really glad it's held up the way it has. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments sections below. Is this your best device of 2020? Now, I'm not talking about favorite devices because like I said, for me, the favorite has to be, whoops, <laughs> the Galaxy Z Fold 2 just because of how cool it is. It's, it's just such a cool device. But, you know, I can't take this everywhere with me. I'm only using this on the weekends. Like I said, if you want to know why, 
I'll drop a link to that video down in the description below. But for the most part, this has been my main device that I have been using since I have gotten it. But y'all let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I would love to know what your best phone of 2020 has been. Thank you all so very much for watching. Make sure to leave a huge thumbs up on this video if you did like it and find it helpful. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any other future videos to come. But for now, this is Josh Quinones. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.